It's Mark from MakeTheMostOfMassage.com. And today I have with me Navjeet Kaur. She's a MELT instructor and she's a yoga instructor. And for those of you who don't know what MELT is, we're gonna learn about that today. Hi, Navjeet Kaur, how are you doing? Hi, Mark. Thanks so much for having me. Well, thanks for, thanks for being here. Uh, you're gonna be a presenter at the conference on April 9th. I'm really excited about that. But first I wanna let people know who you are and um, give them a little background. So I know that when I was looking at your about page that at one point I saw engineer and then I saw yoga instructor. So you went from like engineer to yoga instructor. How'd that happen? Like what were the, what made you make the switch? What was going on? Yeah, so I was really uh, fortunate. I'm in a family of many engineers. And so that was just second nature when it came time to pursuing a career. Um, you know, I didn't have to look too far. Uh, everyone just kind of guided me in that direction in my family. Uh, but I always was really interested in health sciences, really always curious about how the body worked and functioned. And as a teen, I had a couple of health issues myself. And so I was always kind of figuring out how to like address these situations in a, in a natural sense because any doctor that I turned to wasn't able to help me out and just kind of shrugged it off and said, well, you know, it's part of puberty or it's part of this or that. And um, so I think after I worked in the high tech for about 10 or 12 years, um, it's funny, just as soon as I graduated from engineering, uh, the first thing I did was buy a book on aromatherapy. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of dived into that because I was like, oh, finally, I can uh, take some time to pursue this other passion that I have. And uh, so I've always uh, dabbled in, you know, these different kind of healing modalities and like uh, homeopathy, uh, even interested in massage techniques, you know, whatever I could do for my family and friends just on my own. Um, and then I would say the real catalyst for getting into yoga and becoming a yoga teacher and opening a studio was having kids. So having a family and then um, being in that tug of war between, you know, late hours, uh, time to market when it comes to being in engineering and uh, getting products out the door. And so there was a lot of demands and not a lot of understanding in that uh, industry about how to find a balance with uh, family and work. And at that point, I had just done my teacher training for yoga, and I was teaching just two days, two nights a week as a passion project, you know, um, and my, my kids were quite young at that time. So uh, I would say four and just a newborn when I was teaching the twi twice a week. And that was like me time, you know, that was like time for me to explore and to engage in community. And uh, there was a property that came up for rent. And then as I was driving by, I was just like, hey, you know what? My maternity leave is gonna be over soon. And why not? Why don't I try my hand at teaching yoga? So it was just really some divine intervention because I had no plans on right, right. <laughs> opening a studio and just embarking in this whole uh, endeavor. And uh, but I have no regrets, regrets about it. Um, it was just something that was a natural next step for me to do. Um, and it gave me the flexibility. It gave me the time to uh, plan my own schedule, be my own boss, and then also to interact and be with people. <laughs> because yeah. as much as I love engineering, I was stuck in a lab, you know, writing tasks and working with hardware and not much engagement with uh, my peers. Because if I did, that just meant I had to stay a bit longer at work to get things done. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was kind of a catch-22 that way. But as soon as I got involved in the yoga world, you know, just being able to engage with people and uh, helping them out as soon as they came in the door, they might be grumpy or tight or upset or stressed out. And then, you know, within minutes of being in a class together, they would totally be a whole different person. And uh, so that's a bit of my journey. So I would say really the catalyst was about finding that uh, family work balance. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. So 
when you were at work, did you find that, that were you doing yoga then also, or was that always something in the background that you were doing um, all your life? Was yoga something that was a lifelong thing that you've been doing, or is that something you grabbed right around then? Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say in my late 20s, a friend and I, we decided to go and take a yoga class together. And that was like a girl's night out um, kind of approach to it. And yoga was a bit elusive for me throughout my life. So um, ironically, you know, a lot of people think that everyone who has an Indian background is just indoctrinated with yoga <laughs> right away <laughs> and right. Just kind of knows it by second nature but based on the history of like colonization and uh, yoga really became under pushed underground so it's not something that a lot of uh, I would say a lot of areas in India uh, really practiced it was uh, it was driven underground and it has a resurgence now just because of the ability now to openly practice it. And for me, uh, it was taking this program out of, a, out of a church with my friend that gave me the first exposure to yoga. And like many, many others who have like this preconceived notion like yoga is really boring or it's slow. <laughs> Right, right. I was one of those people who had that belief and yeah, yeah. Um, it wasn't until this class that I went to with my friend. So that whole day leading up to it, I was like working on some software bug and I was really like racking my brain around this problem I was facing. I'm like, I can't figure it out, you know, so get to this class, fast forward, we get to this part where it's the end of the class and throughout I noticed like, wow, I hold a lot of tension in my jaw. And wow, my shoulders always tend to be up here. Why is that? So as we were doing the poses, my awareness of my body started to become uh, increased. And then when we we're lying in corpse pose at the end of the class, my friend and I just kind of like giggled at one another. We're like, oh, it's nap time now. <laughs> but then as the teacher guided us into the, the relaxation, I could feel parts of me just melting and uh, I felt more and more relaxed. And then all of a sudden, the solution to the problem that I was facing in that code just popped up in my brain, in my mind. And I was like, whoa, where That's did that come from? You know, yeah, and yeah. I was just so blown away. So I'm still laying there and just like actively writing that code and figuring out, okay, da, 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 okay, would that work? And I'm like, yeah. And I was like so excited. I couldn't wait to get to work the next day. <laughs> That's awesome. But <laughs> yeah, but that was a real lesson for me to uh, to just get that experience, that taste of how powerful um, yoga can be, and also relaxation. You know, so when you when you're relaxed, you're you're opening up your blinders, so you're allowing yourself to be more open to the uh, information that exists around you, the solutions that exist around you. Otherwise, when we're stressed, it's like we have a very narrow field of vision. And so that was like the turning point for me. I was like, I fell in love with yoga right from there. And I was like, wow, I have to pursue this and, and look into it further. And, wow. uh, and so I did. Mm -hmm. So it was that moment that sort of that, uh, that, that time where you, you, it came to you, <laughs> the, the solution came to you. It was like, yeah. That yeah, that's stuff. right, that's right. And then as I did, started doing my teacher training, um, the other light bulbs went off where I was like, oh, that's why my parents made us do this or that and, you know, yeah. practice these things with with oil and certain foods that we eat and, and all this stuff. So all the all the things started to come into fall into place for me and, and make more sense that there was some like uh, reason behind it and some logic behind it as well. So inadvertently, I was practicing yoga and Ayurveda. I just didn't know it. I didn't know what it was called. Right, and right. then once I did the training, it was like, oh, okay, so that's what it is. Right, right. <laughs> it's just not my cookie parents, okay. Right. <laughs> so, and you have a you have a studio now, right? You have a, it's a yoga and tea studio. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's yoga the one you tea. opened up when you decided I'm no longer going to be an engineer. You 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 opened that that one. It hasn't changed names or anything like that. It's been that one. 
Yeah, it's the same name. Okay. And um, the name came about because it was hard to come up with a name. And my husband asked me one day as we we're doing dishes and kind of brainstorming, he's like, oh, like, what is it you do? And I'm like, well, basically we do yoga. And then after I serve tea yeah, and it's a way to like have a community, people get to hang out afterwards. Cause when I was taking classes, I found that was the component that was missing. Like mm. after you do a class, you just feel like so heart open and you want to like connect yeah. and you know, people would just roll up their mat and take off. And I was like, right. but, but, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, where did everybody go? And so that's so, the, the aspect of it that we. So you actually you actually serve tea after every yoga um, class. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, after yeah after any class, no matter what style it is. So if it's yoga, if it's melt, so just after every class, we just hang out for you know, uh, fifteen minutes, enjoy some tea, and it's a chance for people to connect, to get to know one another, and uh, yeah, I think that adds to the the experience of it. That is so cool. Like I, I didn't, I'm, I, now I get it. Yoga and tea studio. I get it. But before I was like, oh, she likes tea. <laughs> but no, it's a cute little part. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. One that's thing cool. on my bucket list is to become like a tea sommelier um, where I can like study the different kind of teas and herbs. That's another really interest uh, of mine that I'd like to add in. But for now, like I fe I'm happy featuring teas that um, are out there. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I love the concept, but I don't know how I'd feel next to the person sharing tea with a person who could do downward dog better than I could. Do you know what I mean? Because there's always a little bit like looking over your shoulder going, how did they, I can't do that, you know? I know that's not, that's like the antithesis of the yoga mind philosophy, but it's hard to resist that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, like, I think that's the first kind of barrier that starts to dissolve as you practice yoga is um, letting go of the ego, letting go of comparison or com competition and, and being more happy with who you are and where you're at. And just, you know, having that internal kind of competition as opposed to like uh, outside of you, because we all have our own capabilities, strengths, and, and weaknesses, things to work on, and things that we excel at. So I think it's all about celebrating that. And that's why you can see here on my t-shirt, I've got the Just Be You. Yeah. And that's our slogan, because <clears throat> like everything else in life, uh, we're looking for this balance. And as a therapist, you know that um, the body is always looking to heal itself and come to a, a state of like homeostasis, you know, coming always back to a certain balance. And, and that is true for ourselves as well. So the more and more that we can come back to our true nature, to come back to who it is that we are, the less than that we're likely to be swayed. And um, that manifests then as illness in the body and in the mind, where we're, we're getting further and further away from who it is that we are. Yeah, I mean, you exude calmness and uh, like what you preach, it, you can see it's in what you practice because you, you, it, your whole, I'm calm now around you. <laughs> that's hard to do. That's, you know. that's great to hear. That's great to hear. Yeah. Um, that actually is, you know, what our, our goal is as a teacher is that, <clears throat> you know, you want to develop your practice and deal with your own neuroses and, and, uh, issues so that your own presence can be healing and so that your gaze can be healing um, for the the people that you work with or the right. people that you interact with yeah it's all about this frequency this vibration that you put out can i can i ask you now about like because you mentioned male therapy how did you get involved with that and what is it mm, sure um so how i got involved with it so as I mentioned, like I opened a studio, my kids were quite young. My daughter was like one at the time and my son was about five. So you can imagine just like how for you, you know, when you're giving, 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 giving of yourself so much as a therapist, in your case as massage therapist, my case as a yoga teacher um, at that time and, um, you know, being pulled in all these different directions as a 
as a mother, as a wife, as a business person, and as a healer, um, you know, I think the tendency is to kind of put yourself at the bottom of the list in terms of priorities and self-care, hence the need for the event that you're, you're hosting right, right. <laughs> shortly. Um, so, but it does manifest in the body. So as, as well intentioned as we are, and as well knowledged as we are, you know, in our modalities, um, you know, if you do burn the candle at both ends, like I was, um, I would wait until I put my kids to bed at night and then I would work on my business. I would work on, you know, my training, um, until like the wee hours, you know, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, but then get up early to do my early morning yoga practice because that's what I was taught to do. <laughs> so yeah, doing like four or five hours of sleep a night for like, a year, two years, it, it caught up with me, you know? So as much as I thought like, well, you know, I'm giving into the world, like I'm doing positive things. So, you know, I, I should be covered, you know, I should be taken care of, but no, like your, 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 my body still needed to have its time to regenerate and whatnot. So I was starting to like, you know, get achy in the morning, um, achy joints, feeling really, really stiff um gain like uh weight gain and, and bloating um brain fog so all of these things were starting to uh creep up until one day it was just like you know it, it hit me like a ton of bricks and i was just like whoa what am i doing like <laughs> i gotta stop i gotta like slow down and, and take time for myself um so it was at that point where it became like you know this is my non-negotiables like I have to get my sleep cycle uh, proper and sleep enough if I want to, you know, be functional during the day and continue to nurture others. I have to nurture myself. So it was actually a dancer friend of mine who, um, when she was staying over with me one weekend, started talking to me about melt and how it was like the big scene in Toronto where she lives and with the, the dancing community. And so she like showed me some of her balls and some of the techniques that she was doing uh, from what she learned in a workshop. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that sounds really interesting. Cause I was aware like here in our, in the yoga industry, we have like another modality. And I tried that one, but I found like it, it needed a lot of like body strength to maneuver. And I wasn't really quite sure of the placement of the balls. Like you really needed to have like a lot of anatomy knowledge and then when it, it didn't really resonate with me as much, but when she showed me some of these techniques and just how gentle it was and how like it didn't really matter about the precision of it, I was like, wow, I, I felt really, 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 really good. Um, so then it wasn't until later, I was uh, downtown Ottawa, it was Canada Day and you know, being the nation's capital, it's a big festivity. And then we were just taking a break and walking around and I went to like uh, a bookstore and I happened to see a copy of the Melt Method book. Oh. And so I thought, oh yeah, it, it, it rang a bell and I flipped through it and I started reading about, um, you know, just kind of seeing what, what else was there. And then uh, I came to a page and I'll, I'll share that with you here. Um, it says, yeah, like if you're if your connective tissue is dehydrated, you might have some pre-pain symptoms. And some of these symptoms may include stiffness and achiness upon rising, inflammation, trouble sleeping, constipation, extra weight, lack of energy, joint pain, swelling, headaches, on and on and on. And I was like, yeah, like I've got all of those. But I was like, but I do yoga, like shouldn't that help? I eat right, <laughs> shouldn't that help? But the, the missing key really was about um, addressing like dehydrated connective tissue. So even if you're inactive, like if you sit at a desk for eight hours a day, you know, you're, sl you're slouched in a position and your body has to hold you in that position. And so that will cause dehydration because part of your body is being compressed, part of your body is being uh, held in a certain position. And then even if you're super active too. Um, could, you, 
of G Corp. Could you um, just do that from dehydration again, the beginning, because that you froze the, the picture okay. froze. Yeah, so just, okay. just start, yeah. Sure. So um, it comes down to having dehydration in your connective tissue. So regardless if you're inactive or if you're active, um, you know, if you're sitting at your desk and you're slouched all day in front of a computer, well, you're having compression in your seat where you're sitting, and then uh, that area will get dehydrated. And if you're active throughout the day, but you're doing like constant repetitive motion, that also will dehydrate your connective tissue. So it's, it's that um, area that we have to work on, which you get the benefit of when you're doing or receiving a massage. However, MELT gives you the ability to do these treatments on your own and for yourself. So I really enjoy that aspect of it because um, when, uh, when I came across the method, I was like, you know what, this would be so great to share with my own uh, members at the studio because they may be coming like say once a week to yoga. And so they feel great, but then they don't come again for another week. Right. And so they're back at that same plateau again. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to like self care, it's something that needs to be done on a daily basis. So yoga ideally is to be done on a daily basis. And I wish we could get massages daily too. <laughs> right. But if you're, if you're working with a client, and you give them a massage, but then after you say, here's some tools that you can use at home, just 10 minutes a day, you know, whatever time you can do it. And then they're able then to sustain the effects of that massage. The next time you see them, it's like, oh, you can work a little deeper or you can work in another area of the body, right? So it just allows you to progressively accelerate your healing. And so that's what was really exciting for me was to see that um, using these melt techniques and the tools um, would help then to accelerate my own healing um, to work on the nervous system that's you know contained within the connective tissue and that's really the missing link when it comes to like dealing with pre-pain symptoms or if you have acute or chronic uh, pain issues is you know, the catchphrase that we use in melt method is the issue is in your tissues. Right. And so, you know, the connective tissue is, um, is found everywhere in your body. And if we can um, work with it, we can address then the, the nervous system and we can bring more uh, stability to the body. And uh, I, I think that's a, a really important aspect then when we're talking about dealing with pain or uh, just the everyday uh, effects of daily living, which causes dehydration in our tissues. Right, so what are the tools you use to rehydrate the tissues? Or how, do, you, I'm, I'm, could, do you have examples of those? Yeah, so um, the, the first thing that we do is work well on the hands and on the feet. And the, the, the first tools are just these balls. So we start off with a soft, um, large ball. And it's really, it's like really squishy. And so the idea is that we want to allow the body to relax over the balls as we're using it with the hands and on the feet. Right. And there's also a smaller version of it. And this is a small, soft uh, ball. And so the, the balls, they were designed um, with the massage therapist's body in mind. Oh. So they're meant to stimu simulate like a massage therapist's thumb or the massage therapist's hand or the elbow or forearm. Okay. So that's the idea behind the size and also the... Um, the grippiness and the texture of the balls. Mm. And then um, as, as a person gets more uh, familiar with the techniques and there's also like a firm ball, okay. it's the same size as like the, the large soft one. And then there's a smaller uh, soft ball, uh, sorry, a smaller firm ball. 
And then there's also a bunion band that is used to work on uh, any bunions that happen in the feet. So with the big toe, so that just wraps around the big toe. So that is, so these are the tools that we use. They all come in this nice little kit. So you can keep it in your purse or in your car, by your bedside table. Um, so that it's always there within reach and you're like, yes, I got a melt. I got a melt today. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one technique that's really quick and easy to do. Uh, and that's called friction. So you just do friction between the hands and that just, you know, fluffs everything up in your connective tissue. And the important thing is that we're getting fluid flow back into those areas. So you can do that between the hands like I just showed you. And oh, already like it has like an effect going up into your shoulders, into the neck. And then you do the same thing in for the feet. And so that's just a nice quick uh, technique or move that I suggest for for clients, you know, whenever they're like, oh, I, I didn't have time. I'm like, did you do a friction? Because <laughs> everyone has time for friction. I mean, right? Is, yeah. yeah. Watching TV or, yeah, right. there's no excuse. Right. There's no excuse. Okay. And then the other thing is the, the roller. So there's this uh, soft roller. You can see like it's really bendy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, another kind of workshop where you can work on with the roller and the roller is placed like underneath all of the what we call it masses of the body so imagine like you're working with a, a client and they're laying on their back on the on the massage table so any of the areas of the body that it's in contact with your table that would be the masses so okay. we use the roller like at the on the base of the skull <clears throat> right. and then up across the upper back across the shoulder blades and the upper rib cage and then across the sacrum the pelvis um, behind the thighs behind the calves um, would be the areas that we work on and the principle behind that is that if we work on the areas where you know there's a huge mass of um, uh, like uh, heavy structures of the body. There's a lot of muscles there. There's a lot of connective tissue. And if we work on the masses of the body, they're also a lot more structurally um, stable, like sound to work on with a roller. And if you work above and below a, a space like your neck, so we never put the roller behind a space because, because of the way that, you know, the neck is designed, it's going to be a lot more uh, unstable. So we work below the neck, we work above the neck, and lo and behold, that frees up your neck. So it increases the space then between the vertebrae because we've worked above and we've worked below. So that's a really um, a nice thing about uh, using the roller in that way. So we're not really using the roller to like iron yourself out. <laughs> right, right, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a soft and squishy bend. Yeah. yeah. And there's no like grimaces. There's no like, you know, tense faces when people are working with the roller. It, it just feels, I, I, I've heard, you know, clients tell me, they're like, wow, it feels like I'm, I've had a spa treatment, you know, <laughs> every time I do melt because it's something that's meant your body is supposed to give into it. Right. And then the more that your body relaxes and takes like the shape of whatever tool you're working with, well, then you're just going to get penetrate deeper into those areas that need to get hydrated. So whenever I do melt, it reminds me, I like this analogy of like when I, when I walk by my couch and I just like fluff up my pillows, you know, just to yeah. arrange them and make the room look nice. That's what working with, on, with melt is like for me. It's like, I just took that time to fluff up all of my connective tissue and now my posture is good and, and everything is great. Yeah. Yeah. I always get the sense of like restore, revitalize, and it's not a big hairy deal in a way. Mm -hmm. right? You know, it's not mm -hmm. like you have to, um, I, I'm, I know there's more to it than this, but it's like you could do a five, 10 minute session in between clients, even if you're a massage therapist and reap some benefits. It sounds like, it sounds like it's pretty instantaneous. Like you're talking about using the roller film, the, the ball foam roller or the ball, the ball. 
the yeah, you the softball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You start to feel the effects of your arms, your neck. Um, that didn't look like it took a lot of time to start to get that feeling. Yeah, and um, you know, some some of your therapists might be like familiar with the myofascial lines and the model as taught by Tom Myers. Mm -hmm. And so, in Melt Method, um, there's a correlation that's made between like the moves that we are, that we teach and like what uh, myofascial line is that affecting. And so, when we're working just locally on a certain area using techniques, so the techniques that we learn we teach are. Um, gliding, so you just glide in a certain area um, just to explore what's happening in, in that region. And then we use shearing techniques. So that shearing technique is meant to like create the, you know, it's like using shampoo in your hair, you're increasing bubbles. Yeah, right. And so we're, we're increasing that uh, space then for fluid to come into the connective tissue. And then we do rinsing. So then rinsing takes like that fluid flow and the benefits that we're experiencing at a local level and then moving it up then so it becomes more of a global um, feel. So following these energetic lines throughout the body as well. Yeah. Is that, can you give us a preview of what you might be showing massage therapists uh, during the event in your, in your presentation? Because I'm, you've got me intrigued. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Yeah, well, what my what my intention with this um, this talk is to get more into like the science of of melt to um, you know make it relatable then to your to your group who is attending. Uh, so first of all, like why would they you know address like the pain points? So perhaps they're also experiencing um, some of these pre pain conditions or maybe have some chronic issues uh, as a result of, you know, what they're offering in their services or just from, you know, living life. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so just to talk about that. So like, you know, what is the connect connective tissue dehydration? How does melt work then to hydrate those tissues? Um, what are the simple tools that we can use? But also I want to like give them a quiz, give them some, um, uh, some real life uh, like uh, cases, not real life cases, but like real life uh, little tests that they can do um, for themselves. So I'll have them like stand in certain positions or move in certain ways. And then they can see for themselves, like if they've got, you know, stuck stress, uh, dehydration going on for them and their body. So then that starts to click, you know, like connect the dots. Um, yeah. yeah. And then from there, um, I'd like to like promote uh, the workshop that I can make available uh, for them to attend. And it's just five weeks, um, five weeks, uh, an hour and a half each session. So a total of five like sessions. So is that and, virtual or is that, can they do it or does it have to be live? Yeah, it can be virtual. Um, and if the timing works for them, they can also do it uh, live and then have access to um, the, the moves and the techniques as a, a library of videos available online. Um, so that's the, that's the idea that I have for it is mainly to expose them to like what MELT is, um, how it can help them out with self-care and um, how easy it is just to work it into the day and to accelerate their own healing and um, may, you know inspire them with their own uh, experience that they will be likely to share this with their clients because this is another great um, way or another modality modality that they can share with their clients if they really want to like I was talking with my yoga students, you know, how they were just coming once a week, but then it was kind of like we were starting back uh, from that baseline. Well, if you want to accelerate your client's uh, journey and their healing, this could be something that they can do as homework um, on their own as, uh, as some technique. So that the next time they see you, then um, you can work, you know, at a next level then in terms of uh, your therapy with them. Yeah, I like the, I like it that it's like um, not necessarily rocket science. I mean, there's theory behind it. There's you know scientific um, application, 
but it it's accessible. You know what I mean? The person, it, 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 it's, there, it's something they would, there's not a lot of barriers to do. So um, I really like that. And I feel like a lot of people will do that. That will, it's, it's something that can just, you know, be done, like I said, while you're watching TV, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the hand part at least. Yeah, well, I like, get yeah, that friction. Yeah. Um, the other thing too is like, like in yoga, I'm, I shared my story about how as I was practicing, uh, I increased my body awareness. And so if, even for melt as I teach it, um, I do recommend that you carve out that time and not, you know, distract yourself with TV or whatnot. But part of the, uh, the practice of melt, um, one of the first, there's four R's of melt. And one of the first R's is called reconnect. So it's taking that time just to reconnect with yourself and also do an assessment to see, oh, okay, so where am I right now? What am I sensing in my body? Where do I feel the imbalances? Where do I feel the tension? And where do I feel great? And then from that, you can decide like what it is that you want to do in terms of the technique. So do you want to work on the hands today? Do you want to work on the feet today? Do you need to get on the roller today? So it's, it's you know, having that increased body awareness and then working with your breath as you practice, um, working with the sensations. So we really want to go within as we're practicing melt. And, you know, that I think will give you a lot more benefit as opposed to kind of like multitask <laughs> as you do so it. You so won't have so the right. same effect. So you can see where I'm at because I mentioned TV twice, right? So <laughs> like, oh, no, no, this guy's going the wrong direction. Right. So I, I would need something, a coach or something, you know. Do you actually do that? Do you do one-on-ones in coaching? Because Yes, I do. Yeah, definitely. I do the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, sometimes <clears throat> either people don't feel comfortable being in a group when I do teach them in person. Um, yeah. Sometimes people feel like they just need another set of eyes on them to make sure that they're doing it correctly. And so I can do coaching either in person or virtual just so I can, I can meet up with people wherever they are in the world. Can they... Do they access that through your website? Like, is there, how do they, how do people get in touch with you? Like if they want to do coaching or if they want to do uh, the virtual melt, how would they do that? Yeah, so I'm in the process right now of just updating my website so that it includes an online scheduler and that makes it a lot easier. Right now, people have been emailing me. You still can from my website is just to email, send me an email um, and uh, mention that you're interested in doing the melt and then we can arrange a time. But, uh, you know, the engineer in me is looking at how to streamline that process. And right. so I'd like to put a calendar in place. So then it's just really easy um, to schedule that way. But yeah, definitely. Oh, that's great. So they can just email you right now. And, they mm -hmm. can, and I'll put that information in the show notes so that people can have access to that. Um, and that, does that also apply to yoga too? But do you do... Virtual yoga is yoga all live. Um, so right now, because of COVID, um, I've been teaching my classes online uh, by Zoom. And there's been a really like positive feedback to that, that, that some of my um, uh, members who weren't able to take classes with me at that time that I teach asked me if I could make um, classes available to them as videos that they can like watch online. So I've created now like an online platform where I have like tons of videos available that you can um, either rent or sign up for like a pass. So if you wanted to do like classes with me uh, based on the theme that I'm working on for that month, um, but can't attend the actual live class, you can sign up for the live class replay and then you have access to all those videos and uh, do it at your own time, but follow the theme that I'm following or, or teaching for that month. And then I also have like uh, specific channels that I call them. So if you're really into yin yoga, for example, I have a yin yoga library of videos that from A to Z, like you think it, it's there <laughs> for, for yin yoga. And if you're beginners, I teach how to you know, do each of the individual poses. And then if you want uh, to follow along in full classes, 
that's available online there as well in the library. So that's the Yin Yoga channel. And I'll, I'll be putting up other channels as well for different other styles of yoga that I teach, like Kundalini and Hatha Yoga. Wow, that's um, a really, really robust programming you have there. Is it okay if I got a video and watch TV at the same time? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the good thing it's like watching tv because it's right. on your tv <laughs> so you can do it on any device actually so that that'll give you your tv fix it'll yeah. just be on your screen and not some drama <laughs> well that's really uh, you have a uh, quite quite a program there um and it sounds like you were hitting all different bases and anyone who wants to try something different there's there's a lot of different uh modalities as your are different philosophies that you're mm -hmm. uh, that you're covering. So, um, so like I said, I'll put everything in the show notes. Um, is there anything else that you want to add? Like, if people contact you or anything that you've that we've missed? Um, well, I just wanted to share like how how this is like such a simple technique um, with the melt method. Uh, it's really um, like quick in terms of like the results that you see. And um, I've had quite a, quite a lot of clients, you know, who have issues like with arthritis, um, you know, maybe they really enjoyed in the past being able to like knit or crochet um, or some people who have carpal tunnel syndrome and, you know, they do the melt technique and with the next time I see them for the follow up, they're just like, wow, I can't believe it. I was able to do this, 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 you know, and, and feel so much better in my body and less pain and better sleep. So sleep is a real, real time that we heal the body. And so melt is recommended to do at least an hour before bedtime. If you really want to be able to switch gears and get into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest right. Um, right. part of your, your nervous system. So yeah, I just really would like to encourage people to, to give it a try because it's something that you have control over, you know your body best. And if you uh, have, you know, the 10, 15 minutes a day to put towards your self-care, this is a real powerful way to do it. Yeah, it sounds powerful. And I promise when I do it, I won't be watching TV. <laughs> TV. Great, good to hear. Yeah. Well, Navjeet Kaur, thank you so much for coming on. I really look forward to your presentation at the uh, at the event on April 9th. Uh, I'm excited that you're going to be presenting, and um, I'll be paying attention. Fantastic, great, thanks so much, Mark, for having me on and for sharing about myself and about my journey with yoga and with Melt Method. And I look forward to seeing the rest of uh, the the presenters at this event, and also. Um, talking to all those who attend. Take care. That's great. Take care. We'll see you soon. All right. All the best. All the best.